Hey, welcome back. We're going to go ahead and proceed with our implementation of a uh, naive uh, shared pointer. So what we're going to present here will be very different than what's uh, presented within the uh, standard template library definition of the uh, shared pointer type. However, a lot of the ideas will be uh, kind of very similar. And I think going through this motion will help you understand um, how a shared pointer is uh, constructed, how it works, and how the actual release of the resource that is under this shared ownership um, occurs. So with that, let's go ahead and just look at what we're implementing. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and pro provide this uh, naive implementation of a uh, type shared pointer for all types T. It will have a pointer to some sort of uh, element of uh, type T named holder as a data member. And then we're not going to implement a whole entire control block, but instead we're going to simply have as a data member of our shared pointer type, a pointer to an object of type size T named reference count, which will be an object of size T whose memory is allocated for it on the free store. And that will contain the number of shared pointers currently engaged in the shared ownership of the object pointed to by holder. Together, we'll go ahead and define a single parameterized constructor, which is going to take a uh, raw pointer to the uh, object that we'd like to share. So this is, I'm not going to worry about the allocation of uh, memory within the constructor. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and run through and assume that um, we're passing in here raw uh, pointer objects to perform the initialization of uh, holder the first time kind of the entity engaged in this sh uh, shared ownership is constructed. Recall that for the senior template library shared pointer, the preferred way of going ahead and initializing a new object or assigning to it will be using that make function, make shared, which will return an object of a type that is other than a raw pointer and it will use a parameterized constructor of shared pointer to go ahead and complete the initialization or assignment stage. But nonetheless, what's you know obviously similar here is what we're building up here together is going to be a wrapper around a raw pointer. And it's going to be one that's going to allow us to have multiple shared pointers engaged in the shared ownership of the object pointed to by holder. So we're going to go ahead and provide a copy constructor so that we can create um, additional or initialize uh, new shared point or shared point objects will engage uh, within this uh, shared ownership of some sort of existing shared pointer object. Also provide an, well, we won't provide an implementation for the copy assignment operator, but we're going to stick to the rule of three here. We're not going to worry about um, the make semantic or move semantics, excuse me. Instead, we're only going to highlight copy semantics. And in fact, I'll leave the copy assignment operator up to you to go through the uh, definition of. We'll have a destructor, which will have some interesting, it'll be an interesting uh, definition because it will rely on our reference count. And then I'm going to provide some simple uh, kind of functionality uh, reminisce of the shared pointer type from the standard template library. Git is going to return a pointer um, to the a raw pointer. So of type uh, pointer to type T uh, with the address, initialized with the address stored in. Uh, holder, so that will allow us to get raw pointers to the objects that are currently um, share engaged in shared ownership across some sort of multitude of shared pointer objects. We'll also have a dereference operator, which will return a reference to the object pointed to by holder. We'll also um, have a use count, which will tell us how many shared um, pointer objects are engaged in the shared ownership of the object pointed to by P and then unique, which is essentially going to return true if the reference count, well, if the object storing the reference count, so that pointed to by reference count has the integer value of one, um, otherwise it will return false. So let's go ahead and look at these definitions. Here's going from our UML to our class template shared pointer. We can see our parameterized constructor as one might suspect, our copy assignment operator, our copy, excuse me, our copy constructor. So let me just highlight that. Our copy assignment operator here, which I've deleted. So there will be no way to uh, assign one shared point 
shared uh, pointer object uh, another. And again, the reason for this is I, this is, if you'd like to, you can define it. Um, it's, uh, I didn't want to be kind of spend the time on it within uh, this video. So that would be a productive exercise uh, for you to engage our destructor. And then here's some inline definitions, which I'll go ahead and talk about um, right now. They're more or less kind of trivial. They do as one would expect. Git is essentially going to return the address of the object uh, to which holder po points. So it's going to return the value of holder. The um, dereference operator is going to return holder dereference so that we can return a reference to the object pointed to by holder. Use count is going to simply dereference reference count and return an object of type size t, which will effectively communicate the number of shared pointer objects engaged in the shared resource of the object pointed to by p. Unique is as we described on the previous slide. Here's our data members. Holder is going to be a pointer to um, some type of object t. And then reference count is going to be a pointer to an object of type size t. And both of these objects, um, or both of these pointers, pointer objects will be initialized uh, in how we're defining this uh, with addresses of objects residing on the free store. So let's go ahead and look at our constructor and then we'll go through the motions and, um, and um, implement the rest of the behaviors. So as one might suspect, our uh, parameterized constructor, uh, constructor is going to take the address of the object that we'd like to um, transfer ownership of to, to our shared pointer. We'll go ahead and initialize holder with that address. We will initialize reference count to null pointer. And then we will go ahead and grab the resource or the, uh, the resource, uh, in this case, the dynamically allocated object of type size two. Uh, size t within the uh, body of this function. So we can see here reference count is equal to an object of new size t initialized with one because at this point there is one shared pointer object engaged in the shared ownership of the object pointed to at this point by holder. Our copy constructor is going to be, uh, again, it's, uh, it, it looks similar to what we've seen before. We have a um, source object taken by um, reference to const. And then we go ahead and initialize holder with the sources holder, reference count with the sources reference count. At this point, we've done a shallow copy. And then the last remaining thing to do is to go ahead and increment the shared reference count object. So the object residing on the free store, that uh, size T object pointed to by reference count We'll increment it by one to show that another shared pointer object is engaging in the shared ownership of the object pointed to by holder. Copy assignment operator, I'll leave this one up to y'all. Uh, remember the one consideration you have to have here is in the case that uh, the object on the left-hand side of the assignment operator already owns uh, some sort of dynamically allocated resource. And in this case, there's a couple of extra considerations that um, you can think through uh, after this video, if you decide to implement this or otherwise. Now the destructor's an interesting one because we're, as these shared pointer objects are going out of scope or after their lifetime is over, we're not always necessarily freeing the dynamically allocated resources pointed to by holder and reference count. The reason being is that again, there can be multiple shared pointer objects engaging in the shared ownership of some sort of resource. So what we're always going to do when we get in, when a destructor is called on any of our shared pointer objects is we're going to first decrement our reference count by one. And remember, Reference count is a pointer to an object residing on the free store, which contains the reference count. So it looks like this. We have this setup going on. This, this object on the free store, which will have some sort of uh, um, positive integer value communicating the number again of shared pointer objects engaging in the shared ownership. 
first thing we do, we decrement that in our destructor. And if that reference count, so the object pointed to by reference count stores the value of zero, we know that there are no more shared pointers engaging in the shared ownership of the object pointed to by holder. And also, I guess, to the reference count, the object pointed to by reference count. So only in the case that we observe a zero integer value in the object pointed to by reference count, do we deallocate the memory associated with um, the object pointed to by holder and that pointed to by reference count. So this only happens when no other objects are engaged in shared ownership, okay? Because if there were, if the reference count was anything but zero, that means that there's some other shared pointer object out there that's also pointing to holder and it's, it, it's engaged in shared ownership, so it owns it too. That means we can't you know, disrespect that ownership and just first shared pointer that, uh, you know, whose lifetime is up, we perform the deallocation. No, we only perform the deallocation when all of the owner's lifetimes are up. So uh, to go ahead, I'm gonna draw this out real quick to show you kind of the, uh, this naive implementation in action. I'll set it up and then we'll go ahead and go through it together. Okay, so when Mang's launched up, a new uh, shared pointer um, object instantiated for type int is going to be created. Its name is SP, and we're going to go ahead and initialize its holder with a new integer object residing on the free store who's initialized to seven. So we can see here that our holder object is going to point, our holder object of SP will point to that integer object, the integer value of seven, and SP's reference counter pointer is going to point to an integer object on the free store holding the integer value of one. Now we call foo passing um, SP by value, which means the copy constructor will be invoked to initialize the parameter of foo copy with a copy of the argument, in this case, SP. Let me draw this out. Okay, so uh, an activation record for foo is pushed onto the stack. We have some memory allocated for our shared pointer, uh, copy. And we can see here that copy's ref is going to point. Well, during this initialization first, we see that a shallow copy for holder and ref has been made. So copy's holder and SP's holder both store the same address as does copy's ref and SP's ref. The one remaining action that we had to perform was in the copy assignment operator. We said we increment the reference count by one and that is reflected in the object pointed to by reference count here. Now we see that foo is going to call goo with the copy of copy. So let's go ahead and I'll draw that out quick and then return back here. Okay, so the parameter of goo copy is initialized with the uh, copy of um, foo's copy. And we can go ahead and see here that during that initialization, the copy constructor for our um, shared pointer object is called. We perform a shallow copy of holder and ref, and then we did have to, oops, let me go back. I meant to cross out the two and put in three. Now the body of goo has a dereference of copy and assignment to 11. So we can go ahead and reflect that now before the function returns. So notice that the object that's, um, that uh, is storing the interest value of level uh, 11 is, has its ownership share across multiple um, objects of type shared pointer. We have copy and goo, so goo's copy, foo's copy, as well as main's sp. Now we went ahead and assigned to the object pointed to uh, by uh, copy's holder 11. We'll go ahead and return from goo. And what's going to happen here is goo copy will go out of scope. So all of this will be broken down, but remember goo's or uh, their shared pointers destructor is de going to decrement the reference count by one. Now we're back in foo picking up where we left off and foo's activation record will be popped from the stack. This will cause the destructor for its copy parameter to be invoked. 
which again is going to, whoops, let me go ahead, is going to decrease the value stored in that ref um, count by one. Now, as SP goes out of scope, as main's activation record is removed from the stack, we can see here that, you know, when we hit the destructor, what's going to happen? Reference count will go to zero, and then we'll get into this conditional here. So memory will be deallocated for the holder, will be deallocated for the reference count, and then main's activation record is popped from the stack. So hopefully uh, this was informative. We're at the end uh, of uh, today's lesson. Hopefully you understand how uh, shared pointer is uh, implemented uh, functionally, how um, it is allows or affords us the capability to have this sort of uh, shared ownership of some sort of dynamically allocated object. And um, well, hopefully you hopefully this, how it's different from the unique pointer, et cetera, is all slowly starting to come together. All right, take care everyone. See you next time.